If you found this video enjoyable, please leave a like and hell, even subscribe if you want to. It only takes two clicks and push that notification bell just to get the messages for my videos. That would be greatly appreciated. When it comes to JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, what JoJo do you think of when you see JoJo in the title of the series? Depending on the person, I would assume maybe Josuke due to his personality, or if you're like a really in-depth character, you might like Johnny, or if you're very humorous, you might like Joseph. It just honestly depends on the person, and definitely here in the West, that that opinion is very split. But in Japan, and at least in my case, when I think of Jojo, I think of Jotaro Kujo, the protagonist of part three, Stardust Crusaders. So is Jotaro my favorite protagonist? No, not even close. To be totally honest, if I were to put my top three, it'd probably end up being Johnny, Josuke, then Jotaro. And depending on the week that you ask me, that might actually heavily change. So why is it when I think of Jojo, I think of Jotaro? And I feel like in a lot of people's cases, when you think of Jojo, it's Jotaro, even if he's not your favorite Protag. I honestly think it comes down to a lot of factors. How Jotaro is presented in the series, how he's written in the series, his overall design, his role in the series, and just him being a cool character overall is probably why people think of him as Jojo. When people honestly think of Jotaro, I think part three comes up a lot because that's his main part. That's where he is the protag. That's where he shows a lot of his highlight moments in the series genuinely. And I think that's where we should start. So when it comes to part three Jotaro, Stardust Crusaders, I think this is where Jotaro is is the biggest the highlight of him honestly speaking he is kind of cowboy like very clint eastwood as which he is inspired from he's just overall badass you can't really say anything bad about jodoro in part three i you can say and i'm, I'm gonna heavily like hint at this throughout the entire video that jodoro does not show emotion he's not in a very in-depth and emotional character but that's how araki actually made him araki does state in a couple of interviews that jodoro is literally supposed to be like this he's supposed to be a gunslinging badass to fight off the villains that's literally his entire purpose and i think that's pretty well done i honestly think jodoro's entire purpose of being that is well well done i think jodoro honestly encapsulates the idea of being a lone hero when it comes to being a hero when he fights solo you can honestly see him have a very kind of stoic kind of i'm gonna beat the shit out of you personality i think that works very well in the scheme of part three due to part three seriousness i think jodoro needed to be serious and it works very well due to the amount of villains and kind of the more or less plot mover that is holly joestar jodoro really needed to be this serious character to move the plot along by beating villains effortlessly and with style in there as well Overall, I think this left a great impression on a lot of people. Definitely Araki, because Araki just genuinely seemed like he was going to end Jotaro right then and there, but he progressively added him throughout all parts afterwards, except, you know, the alternate universe. Also, I almost completely forgot to mention this, time stop, stand abilities. Jotaro is technically the first JoJo stand user, and I feel like that leaves a massive impression on a lot of people. I'm not saying that Joseph and Jonathan are bad characters and are not not rememberable but you have to remember Hamon and the whole idea in parts one and two just kind of get forgotten about over time and that's honestly the sad case genuinely speaking when it comes to part one and two but with three it really sets the mark for a lot of things that are staples in the series onward tldr jotaro and part three are kind of legendary in the anime community for really setting jojo up for literally its legendary adventure and just legendary status in anime and manga and that's just for part three jotaro we still got four five and six so when it comes to part four jotaro i think this is where people who didn't like jotaro in part three because he just you know wasn't cool enough for them i guess or just not emotional part four jotaro really picks up that slack his genuine mission in morio his overall character and his interactions with others is a lot more improved and a lot more mature overall since jotaro is grown up in this part makes him out to be a lot better also his drip in this part is mad fire like that ending design for part four Jotaro cleanest look hands down like no contest overall part four Jotaro improves upon part three Jotaro you honestly see a lot more character with him he just has better interactions with a lot of people he honestly overall grows as a human being in part four he's a better version of Jotaro from part three just like hands down regardless good and he's goaded and I do want to highlight a pretty big thing here you see with sequel series there's usually a pro 
problem with bringing old protagonists back into the fold. Usually, they're too overpowered for the author to write a very convincing story, but Araki brilliantly uses Jotaro. He like he has a pocket Jotaro in there if he's ever in a problem. And you know, his highlight with the fight with Kira both times actually. Now thinking about it, uh, the rat fight to show you know, yeah, he he is overpowered, but you know, stands the stand you know power system really can draw him back into not being a very powerful character. Like overall. Araki did Jotaro really, really well in part four. Like, honestly, great. Like, part four Jotaro, massive improvement over part three Jotaro. Just hands down. Like, he is slowly progressing and building into a greater character in each and every part, thanks to Araki's writing. I think this is why a lot of people think him as Jojo. Now, of course, Jotaro only makes a cameo on part five, but I do want to highlight something. This is more kind of an, an analysis kind of thing to do, at least in my case, because I do analyze anime and stuff, that I think Jotaro having a cameo in part five is kind of more or less a symbolism thing to have the moving of torches to pass on to future Joe stars. He did it with Josuke, he did it with Jorno, technically, and he did it with Jolene. I think this is just a way for Rocky to say like, yeah, Jotaro is giving grace for these future protagonists. Which is funny because Rocky has also stated that all future protagonists after part three Jotaro are literally based off of Jotaro. Like, if that's not a callback to saying, yeah, Jotaro is Jojo, it's you know you're crazy bro finally part six now if you are looking jotaro as a composite character and not looking at him individually in the parts that he has shown then this is probably the weakest version of jotaro personally speaking but as a composite character this really adds a nice bow to him previous parts show jotaro as a mentor as a passer of torches as a badass gunslinging stand user but in part six we get to see an emotional side to him a lot more character development in terms of i have a daughter I don't want her to be in the world of stand users, so I'm going to protect her from that world. Of course, that fails, and Jotaro still protects his daughter regardless. Overall, bad parenting, honestly, because you left your kid alone for a lot of years by herself with an only mother, but, you know, you had good morals with it. Could have done a lot better, Jotaro, but overall, good. You're a lot better than a lot of other shonen protagonist fathers. Sadly, Jotaro in part six doesn't get a lot of screen time. He sadly only gets used in Poochie's introduction arc, and then he becomes a main focus for a large majority of the series up until the Maiden Heaven plan is finished. But from what is shown, I think Araki does a great job with him. Really truly sculpting the final piece of Jotaro. From gunslinging, stand using badass to a father trying to protect his daughter. Honestly, poetry. Araki truly spent his time with Jotaro with interviews saying that a character like Jotaro was planned from the very beginning of the series who eventually would develop into this very stoic and badass character over time. Honestly, Araki is a genius writer. He took his time with Jotaro. Even if he wasn't the main protag, he still had a lot of high moments that just made him overall genuinely really cool. Just like, he's Jojo, bro. Like, like Jotaro is like the, the character basis for so many things in this series. Like, Araki clearly knows what he's doing and what he wants. And it's clearly shown, at least from his perspective, who Jojo is. Jotaro, at the end of the day, is a character who really transcends the idea of Jojo. Like, like he's in every part. He does a critical role or factor in the part. He's based off of characters in real life that really have stood the test of time, just like Jotaro. He's the influence for so many things other than his own part in media in general, and is just a badass in anime in general. Like Jotaro is just a cool damn character at the end of the day that I think a lot of people should respect a lot more overall. That's why, at least in my opinion, he is Jojo. Well, that's going to be the end of the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Stay hydrated. See you in the next one, ladies and gentlemen.